just some more action on Fisher here. We're gonna do another problem with some friction. In this case, we're gonna look at something on incline. So, we'll just to take a little look really quick. Why not? Grab ourselves an incline here. And what can we do? We can take some mass. A little less massive. We can, use some mass. we can have an incline here, right? We can put something up on an incline. What's gonna happen when I let go? Oh yeah, it's gonna accelerate down the incline, right? Assuming that it overcomes the maximum force of static friction, which it will. And there we go. But as it's sliding down, we're not saying this is a frictionless incline anymore. We're gonna say that there's friction. There's a force of friction that's acting on this object and it's sliding down, which acts in the opposite direction that the object's moving. Which means if it's sliding down, the force of friction is up. So what we want to do is hey, take friction into account for a given system and Go ahead and make some determinations. So, let us just do that, huh? shall we? Shall we? Sure. All right, so here's the problem. All right, so we've got ourselves 2.5 kilogram mass. We're gonna throw it up on it, not throw it, we're gonna set it on an incline of 50 degrees and release it from rest. So let's just draw something out here. Oh, 50 degrees, sure. I should draw my inclines the other way. Hmm, that's, that's odd. That's okay. I'll go ahead and take this 50 degree angle of inclination. We're gonna take ourselves a mass. It's initially at rest, and we'll say that the mass is 2.5 kilograms. And we're also told that the coefficient of kinetic friction between the surfaces of the object and the incline is 0 0.286. So we'll just go ahead and write that. Mu sub k is 0 0.286. So the materials from which the object and the surface is composed dictates this, and there we go. What do we want to know about this? Well, we release it from rest, we know it's going to start sliding down, great. How about things like, hey, what's the normal force acting on this object as it slides down the incline? That would be good. So if we're going to start asking about forces, let's just draw some in, shall we? Sure we shall. So we've got this, right? We've got ourselves the perpendicular component of the gravitational force. F sub G perpendicular hat. We've got ourselves the normal force, N hat, great, both perpendicular to the plane itself. We've got ourselves the parallel component of the gravitational force, F G parallel hat, and we should also have ourselves some amount of kinetic friction as it slides down. So we just draw them in so we have an idea of what we're dealing with. It doesn't say anything about any applied forces acting. So this is all we've got. Force due to gravity, we're just adding in friction here. So great. What do we want? We want to know what is the normal force acting. So let's just go for that, right? A, what is n hat? Well, we want to start with n hat. As we've done before, we look at all the forces that are perpendicular to the surface, which would be n hat and fg perpendicular hat. So we know this, the net force perpendicular to the incline has to be equal to what? Zero, that's right. This object's not moving or changing its motion that way or that way. So, there's no acceleration perpendicular to the incline, the net force perpendicular to the incline is equal to zero, and the net force perpendicular to the incline is equal to the vector sum of all forces acting perpendicular to the incline, which is n hat plus fg perpendicular hat. <clears throat> so from this, we know that and hat plus FG perpendicular hat must be equal to zero. Great. And this gives us then that N hat is equal to negative FG perpendicular hat. Negative sign says they're in opposite directions. Well, we know that. Gravity is down perpendicular. The normal force is up perpendicular. Really comes down to what's the magnitude of the normal force? How much normal force is acting? Well, if we go back to inclines, we've got the FG perpendicular in terms of its magnitude is equal to what? That's right, MG cosine theta. 
mg cosine of theta sub i, where hey, theta sub i is the angle of inclination. It depends. It depends on the angle of inclination and the mass. So at that, we note that this is also equal to n. They have to have the same magnitudes, just opposite directions. These are just magnitudes. There's n right there, mg cosine theta. So we could compute it out. n is equal to mg times the cosine of theta sub i, which is 2.5 kilograms times g times the cosine of uh, 50 degrees, which gives us the magnitude of the normal force is equal to 5 times the, times the cosine of 50. 15.748 newtons. If we want to put perpendicular up, that would be fine. Not really necessary for the normal force. At any rate, we are able to quantify it. There it is. That is our part A. Part B asks us, hey, what is force of kinetic friction acting as this object slides down the incline. So B, we want to know what is F sub k hat. Well, what do we know? We know this, right? F sub k hat to magnitude is equal to mu k times n. Is n just equal to mg? No, it's not. We've already determined that. It's mg cosine of theta. This is quantity here, this is what it's really equivalent to, mg cosine theta. So in this case, this is actually mu k, mg, cosine theta sub i. That quantifies the magnitude of the force of kinetic friction. All right, so we can put all that in. We know that this is just the 15.748, mu sub k is 0.286. So we've got the magnitude of F sub k is equal to 0 0.286 multiplied by 15.748 a newtons, which then gives us that F sub k hat is equal to, quantify that, let's see, what's your times, 0.286, yes, 4.504. 4.504 newtons. We want to know it has a vector here. This is important directionally because the object can move up or down. What direction is this? Well, it's that way. It's up the incline. So what we can say is up the incline, right? Up the incline. So there is the force of kinetic friction. 4.504 newtons directed up the incline. Great. All right, what's next? Well, let's ask what is the, uh, the net force acting, All right? Let's see. See, so that F hat is equal to a what? So, well, we already know that the net force perpendicular equal to zero, which leaves us with the net force parallel, right? The net force parallel is equal to all the forces acting parallel to the incline, which is Fg parallel hat plus F sub k hat. There they are. Well, what do we do with these? We quantify them out, right? What is the parallel component of the gravitational force in terms of its magnitude? Mg sine theta, that's right. And we already know what this is. This ends up being mu k mg cosine theta. But we need to have some sort of sine correlation with the directions. One's down, one's up. This is down, this is up. The direction that this object is moving is down the incline. So I'm going to go ahead and utilize down's positive, up's negative. So directions. Here, let plus down, excuse me, down the incline, and thus minus the up the incline. So when we take this expression now, we are still solving for the net force as a vector, 
but we can replace these vector hats with the sine correlation that gives the directionality. So we've now got the net force parallel to the incline is equal to, this is down, right? So it just is positive, Fg parallel, and then we've got plus F sub k. Well, F sub k is up the incline. Up the incline is the negative direction. So we can write this as minus F sub k. So what do we do with that? Well, hey, we know that Fg parallel is mg times the sine of theta, and F sub k is equal to u k mg cosine theta sub i sub i, where this ends up just being equal to the 4.504. But at any rate, we can then write that the net force parallel to the incline is equal to mg times the sine of theta sub i minus mu k mg times the cosine of theta sub i, which is equal to 2.5 kilograms times g times the sine of 50 degrees minus, well, minus 4.504. 4.504. Great. Which gives us then net force parallel to the incline is equal to 5.8 minus that 14.264. 14.264 newtons. ourselves the net force. What can we do with that? Well, now that we know the net force, we can go ahead and say, hey, we've got a part D here. What is the acceleration of this object? Once we know the net force parallel of the incline, the acceleration is almost trivial, right? We know that the net force parallel to the incline produces the acceleration of the mass parallel to the incline. We already know what that is. We know it's down the incline. So we'll stick with these sign conventions. Down is positive, up is negative. And we've got ourselves that A parallel hat is then equal to sigma F parallel hat divided by M, which is the 14.264. 14.264 newtons divided by 2.5 kilograms gives us that A hat it is equal to. 5.706 5.706 meters per second squared it came out to be positive so I can just tack that on and say down the incline ask one last thing just to ask something that last thing is Hey, if this object's released from rest, how fast is it going after it slides 1.5 meters down the incline? So this object, released from rest, will slide down the incline. We just want to know, after it slides down a distance, delta r hat is equal to 1.5 meters. V final is equal to what? How fast is it going? So, how are we going to do that? We ask ourselves, is the acceleration constant? And well, this should be pretty um, distinct. We say, well, there's no variance in t in there. It's not a function of t, it's just one value, 5.706. As long as we don't switch the angle and we don't change the materials, that's going to continue to be the acceleration. Constant net force, constant acceleration, equation of motion for constant acceleration, then allow us to examine the future evolution of the system. All right, so what do we have? Well, instead of a delta x or a delta y, we use delta r. Still going to say down is the positive direction, which gives us up is the negative direction. That way, our displacement delta r is going to be positive down the incline, 1.5 meters. We've got v initial is equal to 0. v final is what we want to know. And the acceleration is down the incline 5.706. 5.706 
meters per second squared. Yeah, there's some amount of time. We're not asked about time. We just want to know V final. How uh, we're going to get that? Again, equation of motion for constant acceleration. One of them is V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus two A delta R. Kind of generalize it to the R direction, one dimensional motion still. And we can solve this out for V final, giving us that V final is equal to the square root. This is zero plus two times 5.706 meters per second squared multiplied by 1.5 meters. And we get ourselves square root three times that. 4.137, sure. 4.137 meters per second down the incline. Okay. Once we know what the net force is, really, we can figure out anything about its motion. But this is just for an object release from rest, slides down the incline. We can do all sorts of things. We could push it up the incline, give it a little shove. It could initially be going up, pull it up the incline. We could push it faster down the incline. Um, but this is, this is what we've got going on for this. Our friend the incline, but now we've added friction to it. Heating up. Heating up. All right, that's it. Have a good one. Take care.